I'd like to now introduce uh, another new friend, uh, Ken Gear, who's the executive director of the Leading Journalists of America. There's a sea of, as there's anything else in the country, there's a sea of change in the home building industry. Uh, for so far in the past, our experience with home builders was sort of just say no and as a roadblock. And what happened was the 18 of the largest home builders in the United States came around to the idea that it made business sense to be able to say yes and find out ways that could be done economically and that made sense in the marketplace. Um, I'm proud to say that key, Ken was a key ally in convincing Congress to extend energy efficiency tax credit before the Congress died. So Ken Gear, please come up. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, as Steve said, uh, Leading Builders of America is a, uh, a, a very new trade association, unlike the, the two prior speakers. We, we've been in existence for only uh, a little bit under two years now, and uh, we're a Washington, D.C.-based trade association. Primarily, uh, what we do is lobbying Congress for, for policy issues impacting uh, the home building industry. Uh, our membership is made up of 18 companies, but those 18 companies represent 40% of all new homes built uh, in, in America last year, and that, that the market share is actually growing. We expect it to be, <coughs> excuse me, over 50% uh, next year. Uh, you know, w when we came together as, a, as an organization, one of the things that all the, the member companies agreed on was, was energy efficiency, and, and that's the future of our business model. Uh, uh, we may have different ways, and our member companies may have different ways of getting there, but everybody would, would had the common uh, uh, goal of, of promoting energy efficiency. And that, that's really because it was sort of a convergence of market forces, as you all know. We have uh, consumers uh, demanding it, telling us that they, that they want uh, more efficient homes. We have, you know, our providers uh, 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 and suppliers are building more, making huge advancements in recent years on making technology uh, more advanced, so we can we can actually get more bang for the buck uh, in the homes. And then finally, regulators at the local, state, and federal level are all demanding uh, more energy efficiency in buildings. Uh, there are, however, a few um, impediments in the way that we're trying to uh, help resolve. Uh, the the mortgage finance system and the appraisal system. Uh, is sort of outdated and it doesn't include energy efficiency. So uh, the, the problems that we see are one, you know, consumers are resistant to trade-offs. They want efficiency, but when they buy a new home, they have a certain, they have a certain budget and 95% uh, of the time um, they, they choose the granite countertops or the hardwood floors instead of the energy efficiency features in a home. Uh, so that's problem number one. Problem number two is the mortgage underwriting process in this country doesn't allow for energy savings to be leveraged. The, the underwriting process um, is supposed to, de to determine if the buyer uh, can afford to make the monthly payment for that home. Uh, you know, if you have an energy efficient home and can show through an energy audit that it would save 50 or $75 or, or more a month, you get no credit for that in your mortgage. Uh, and your mortgage underwriting, even though your operational cost, your out of pocket every month will be less, you, you, you don't get any benefit in, in the process. So uh, that, that's a, a problem that we see to really getting us to scale. And finally, the appraisal process um, doesn't consistently or accurately value energy saving features. To go back to my example, if when that consumer chooses the granite countertops or the hardwood floors, the value, the appraisal of their home goes up. Uh, if they choose the energy efficient package for the same cost, five or six thousand dollars, their appraisal doesn't go up a dollar in most cases. Uh, so you, you imagine the example in the real world of a builder built a home, say it's a two hundred thousand dollar home, uh, they put an extra five thousand dollars in incremental cost in, in uh, an HVAC system or insulate, you know, better insulation, and they get to the closing table. Uh, now they have, it's a $200,000 house, $5,000 incremental cost. The house appraises for just uh, 200000 not 205. So th what happens is the bank won't lend based on the 205, so you have $5,000 in cost that either the buyer has to make up in cash at the closing table or the builder has to eat. Well, you, 
the, it, it, the disincentive that that creates for the next house and the one after that is pretty dramatic. So we're, we're trying to, what, we, what we're trying to do in our energy policy as we're developing it is to sort of address the, uh, these problems. So uh, in Congress this year, we're working first to support a, a long-term multi-year extension of the new home energy efficiency tax credit, the 45L credit. And we partnered with, with uh, ResNet, who, who's brought on a, a real top-tier lobbying firm in Washington uh, this year to really quarterback that effort. And they've, done a, they've already moved the ball forward uh, in a lot of ways. And there's a large coalition working on that. But, um, we have a lot of work to go, especially the, the challenges that Congress is facing with budget issues this year, but uh, that, that's, that's a key. Secondly, we're really trying to focus on the, the mortgage and the appraisal issues and educate uh, uh, members of Congress and, uh, and the, the policymakers that oversee the, the, the um, uh, housing issues in the, in the country and the, in the Obama administration, why you know, the time has come to sort of change the, the system that's been in place for 50 years and, and make it recognize uh, energy efficiency. The work product that we've come up with is called the SAVE Act, which Steve mentioned earlier. And it requires a couple things. Uh, one, it requires energy costs to be included and the cost of ownership test. When you apply for a mortgage today, they look at, they look at your ability to pay. They, and the, the, the factors that are in that calculation are principal interest of the loan, taxes, and insurance, and that's it. We, we would propose to add energy to that, the, the energy cost of the home. And energy, by the way, is a higher cost than, than taxes or insurance. So it makes sense to put it in. It, make, it gives better underwriting, forgetting about uh, building an energy efficient home, it makes the underwriting process better because you have more information going, sorry, going into the mix uh, uh, when, when deciding the, the, the ability to pay. Uh, and uh, what it would do is the energy costs it, it, that we're adding, that principal interest tax, insurance plus energy, would be the, the, the basis of that would be a HERS test. So uh, if, you could, if you could demonstrate savings uh, based on an audit, uh, you, would, you would get extra borrowing capacity so you could afford both the granite countertops and the energy efficient features of the home. Uh, it would require uh, the, the net present value of energy savings to be included in the appraisal. So if you can show that, that the operating cost of a home, say, is $50 cheaper per month, over the course of the, the life of that home, you, that will probably translate into five or $6,000 in, in net present value. That would be added to the appraisal. So the, the value of the house uh, would, would increase um, you know, commensurate with the, with the operational savings. And this would apply to all federally um, issued mortgages and uh, it, would, it would take place over the, between now, date of enactment, hopefully this year, and, and three years from now. And the benefit of all this, you know, would be homes, you know, 30% more efficient within the next few years. Every home, uh, it would have no impact on affordability of homes, uh, and it would improve the underwriting process for all homes, whether they were energy efficient or not. Uh, and it would provide additional incentives to retrofit existing homes because the the uh, e the, the energy costs would be factored in both for existing homes and new homes. Uh, so we're hopefully have legislation filed here. We've been working on it for the better part of a year, trying to work out all the bugs and build support. And we have a, we have a very good coalition uh, that is supporting the bill already, uh, including uh, many of the leading environmental groups in town and, and, and business groups coming together to support the bill. It's being uh, sponsored by and drafted by Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado. If there's anybody from Colorado here, I'd give him a call and thank him for working on it. <laughs> uh, uh, but he, he's really been, uh, uh, Senator Bennett has really brought all the stakeholders together and really he's trying to work out a bill that works for everybody so it won't be controversial, uh, which is a good thing these days in Congress. So uh, with that, I, I look forward to working with all of you as the process develops. We'll, we'll be working closely with, with ResNet and, and hopefully keeping you all uh, up to date on where we are in the legislative process. And when it comes down to uh, reach out and call your legislators, I hope you'll be there to support it. So uh, thank you all.